You see, last year, pretty much every single month, I made a video on the A's family because they couldn't stop doing dodgy shite. <laughs> so you can imagine my shock when I had a look to see how long it's been since my last A's family video, and it's been two months. Now, that does become slightly irrelevant because obviously they have done something now, hence why I'm making this video, but two months staying out the drama? Pretty good going for them. Now, before we talk about one of the many reasons why Austin McBroom is a bit of a strange bloke, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. I'm trying to reach 400k, and I'm going to be sad until I hit it. And you wouldn't want that, would you? So in case you aren't aware, the Ace family uploaded a new documentary on Osmer Broom's last fight, which, um, in case you didn't see that fight, uh, here's some highlights. You know what I'm going to do? On a cut, it's going to go to me whooping your ass. You do it. You do it. Ping, ping, ping. Bow, ping, ping. Wow. When someone gets knocked out, they get beat really bad. Mm. You know how that clip just keeps playing over and over and over again? Bow, bow. You know how that clip just keeps playing over and over and over again? Bow, ping, bow, ping, 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 ping. Look, I'll be honest, I didn't really need to show the highlights, but they're a fun watch, aren't they? But they have made a documentary on this event. It's called My Untold Story. And in said documentary, Osmo Broom just self-report himself. He snitches on himself for cheating, and we will talk about his documentary and have a look at it, but let me show you first of all where I first found out about this. So there's another boxing event happening where they're picking the opponents out at random, and a Nissan Gib is picking his opponent, and it could be one of seven people, and it just so happens to be Austin McBroom. Austin McBroom. No! Now, what's interesting about this is one of the presenters on the show said he was looking at Osmo Broom when his name got called, and the body language said a lot. I was looking. I want to see as soon as I want to get the immediate reaction of like when you guys saw the name. Yeah. And then when you said the name, the reaction of the fighter getting chosen. And Austin did one of those like, like eye roll, smile, poker face, then like a. Oh no. Like one of those. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, he got knocked down like five times in that fight. Like, he probably doesn't want to do it again. But either way, the rematch is happening, so they're doing the face off, and Austin McBroom mentioned something which he really should have kept to himself. But I took an IV to get out there and fight you. You cheated. I took an you IV. Cheated. So you cheated. I took an you IV to be, able, to be able to you stand. You cheated. You cheated. You're a cheater. I took an IV to be able to and you still to lost. be able to stand up and fight you. Ah. Yeah, he's bringing up the fact that he had to do an IV to have the fight to try and make him seem tough and that he could have postponed it, but he's just admitted that he cheated. If you aren't aware, having an IV in combat sports is illegal because it gives you an advantage. Like for example, this is the rules with Yasada, which is a company that the UFC use to drug test people and make sure they're not cheating. And it says, IV drips can contribute to high amounts of weight cutting and can also be used to mask performance enhancing drugs. UFC fighters face bans of up to two years for using IV drips without a medical reason. And it's the same type of thing under many boxing commissions. And you might be thinking, they've just said under some medical reasons you might be able to use it. But Osman Broom literally says in his documentary that he did it behind the commission's back. Which, yet again, is cheating. He's using something he's not allowed to use to improve his performance. And you can't do that in the best of times in sport. But in a combat sport, it's frowned upon. Like, yeah, if you use something that you're not allowed to use to enhance your performance in something like cycling, you're still a bit of a dickhead, you're still cheating, but you're not hurting anyone, like physically at least. But in combat sports like boxing, you're quite literally going out to hurt the other person, and if you're using something you're not allowed to use to enhance your performance, you're the scum of the earth really, right? And by the way, just to put in perspective of how frowned upon it is to use IVs in combat sports when it's not allowed, we actually just had a situation maybe about a month ago when Alexander Volkanovsky was fighting Islam Makachev, and there was some rumours going around that Islam might have used an IV before the fight. Now these are some tweets from Dan Hooker, who's another UFC fighter, saying, Dumb C-U-N-T thinks he can fly to Australia, hire a nurse to give him an IV, and we won't find out. Cheating dog. He doesn't cheat, he doesn't win. Islam is a cheat. Now, it was never proved that he did use an IV, but clearly you can see what people think about fighters who cheat like that. You can't mess about this stuff, and luckily it was an IV, and it wasn't like actual performance enhancing drugs like steroids, but it's still illegal, and uh, yeah, he mentions it in the documentary, and I thought it'd be interesting to have a look through it, because I haven't actually watched it all yet. First, want to start out by thanking everyone, my supporters, people who tuned in that night, people who showed up that night. He wants to thank the 200 people that turned up. I mean, honestly, they were very committed to the cause, so fair enough, they deserve some respect. So now I'm about to share something with you guys that nobody knows besides my family 
and my team and now you guys fight and fight you gotta be the promoter i mean it's very intense isn't it it seems like he's about to admit to a murder but realistically he's about to make a bunch of excuses on why he lost a boxing match that was one hell of a fight kim you're one hell of a fighter you deserve that win and I wish you the best of luck to who you fight next. Uh, it's you, mate. I'm sorry to break this to you. It's probably not what you want to hear, but it's you. So maybe another five knockdowns on the cards? Who experienced or would have experienced what I experienced that night would have shared this story immediately. Definitely the old Austin would have shared this the night after the fight, but the new me wanted to wait until the time was right. You know, the old me would have admitted that I cheated in a boxing match straight away. I probably would have boasted about it, but this time I waited a few months before I admitted I cheated. Look at me all grown up. I'm gonna try my best to narrate the day of the fight and how it all went down. So leading up to the day of the fight, I was a little under the weather. Oh, he's doing the Logan Paul thing. He sneezed three times. I've been sick for the past three days. The first thing I did this morning was sneezed three times. Honestly, my biggest pet peeve is when people lose these fights and they just come with loads of excuses. Like all you have to say is clearly it wasn't my night. The better man won. That's it. No one really gives a shit after that. But no, you've got Austin McBroom saying he's ill, Logan Paul sneezed three times, and Jake Paul recently came out and said the reason he lost to Tommy Fury is because he had a wet dream. I do want to talk about it because I I know I know you didn't want to, but mom said, she said, Jake had a wet dream the night before his fight. I sparked up and I said, no f way. I had a wet dream the day of the KSI fight. God, this is a horny family, isn't it? Fuck it, hell. <laughs> they just get extremely turned on every time they're about to have a boxing match. They're a weird set of brothers. I was talking to your moms about that. <laughs> very open family. Yeah, very open yeah, family. Yeah, 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 too open. It is a bit of a weird conversation to have as a 25-year-old man though, isn't it? Like, hey, mom, just want to let you know, I cummed my pants last night when I was sleeping. Yeah, thought you would, uh, be interested. But well, yeah, it makes your legs weak. Totally. I guess the viewers, like, that's that's why it's bad, is it makes your legs weak. Look, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say the reason why he probably lost to Tommy Fury is because Tommy outboxed him, and it wasn't because he had a wet dream. Maybe that's a hot take. As we pulled up to the stadium, we hit a stop because there was so much traffic of everybody trying to get to the stadium that we were literally just stuck inside the Sprinter for like 20, 30 minutes. God, he's saying so much irrelevant information, isn't he? Like, why do the A's family just always add details that don't need to be added? Like, I'm sorry, what does you being in traffic for 20 minutes have to do with the fact that you lost a fight? We can skip that part. So I basically just said, hey bro, I have a fever right now, I'm super hot, I got the chills, I'm sweating, and my body is aching. Okay, I'm gonna say a little spoiler right now, but later on in the video, Austin says that he had COVID when he fought Gibb, right? And that raises a few questions. First of all, if you did have COVID, why did you carry on with the event anyways? You could have given it to other people. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of old staff members or maybe vulnerable staff members, like, be a bit more responsible. Secondly, if you didn't know you had COVID, but you were feeling really ill, why did you not take a COVID test? And thirdly, I'd be very surprised if the commission didn't COVID test people. I feel like that's a pretty standard thing to happen. You see fights getting called off, even to this day, when fighters have COVID. So, I don't really get it, but apparently in Osmo Broom's world, this all makes sense. Um, if anybody knows me, knows that when it comes to events, when it comes to performing in front of a large crowd, that's what I live for. I mean, I will say, it has been a long time since you performed in front of a large crowd, because with your events over the last few years, no one really shows up. But yeah, I mean, if we're talking about performing in front of like 100 people, you're probably the master of it by now. So when I got out of the shower, I had to make one phone call, and that was to my doctor that takes care of me whenever I'm feeling sick, whenever my kids are feeling sick at any time of the day, he's the best doctor in the world. Then I asked him, my oh man, what can I do to help me walk out and continue this night? He said, that the best thing we can do for you is try to send a doctor out your way and hook you up to an IV. And obviously, if anybody knows about boxing, you can't do none of this <laughs> the night of your fight. If anyone knows anything about boxing, this is very, very illegal. So I actually cheated for the fight and still lost. Can you believe it? Obviously the commission had no idea because we had to sneak everything we were <laughs> Why doing is he in, in I don't order get it. to have a chance to fight. And obviously, I was 100% down. Obviously, I was down because if I didn't beat a Nissan Gib, at least I beat the commission. That's right, my record is one and one on the night. Hooked me up to the IV, and I was sitting there for about 45 minutes to an hour, just letting all of the liquids into my body. 
and I'm resting, I'm praying, hopefully this will turn turn me around. And can we just say, if this was the other way around and a Nissan Gib needed the IV, and knowing that it's illegal and he cheated, you know fine well that Osmer Broom would be saying a bunch of shite about it. He would actually have a reasonable excuse as to why he lost, but no, it was the other way around and he still lost. Which, uh, I don't know why he's bragging about it. Go out there and, and do what I gotta do. And again, I repeat, the commission had no idea what was going on. I tried my best. <laughs> and again, I repeat, I cheated. Do you understand that, you idiot? I'm a cheat. <laughs> okay, we get it, mate. You don't need to keep repeating yourself. Fucking hell. To hide everything that was happening in order for me to fight. Because if they knew, they would have stopped the fight. Because if they knew, I could have faced a suspension by the commission. But they didn't find out. How sick am I? I'm laying there and Catherine's filming me and I'm like <laughs> all out of it. Like and Catherine's filming me, you know, you've got to get it in the vlog. This family's so strange, man. Like he could literally be on his deathbed and Catherine and Broom would whack out the G7X. So strange. <laughs> Just filming the whole process of cheating. Yeah, that's good. Yep, this is what's happening. Before. Why is he showing this? I don't think he realizes how stupid he is for showing this. So as you all know, the results were the results. And after the fight, I went to the hospital. And sure enough, I was tested positive with COVID. Yeah, let's not pretend that you went to the hospital just because you had COVID, by the way. You went to the hospital because you were probably severely concussed. You got knocked down like five times. It seems like this video is just one big ploy to try and make it seem as if Gibbs' victory over him wasn't a real victory and that he shouldn't celebrate it. It's just excuse after excuse after excuse and obviously they're gonna fight again and maybe Austin will win because I'll be honest, Osmer Broom is actually quite decent when it comes to these like YouTuber boxing stuff but I really hope he doesn't because how smug he will be will drive me insane. <laughs> like honestly, I couldn't give a shit about the result of many YouTuber fights. I really couldn't care less. I don't even care if Jake Paul wins, but Austin McBroom, I don't know what it is, but I really don't like him. I mean, I say I don't know what it is. I've made like 47 videos explaining what it is. So I have just lied there. Sorry about that. As they're, the doctors are telling me my results, if anybody knows me, I'm a big believer in everything happens for a reason. So was this before or after that you were surprised that the doctors didn't know who you were? Like if you remember in Osmo Broom's first video talking about this fight after it happened, he said he went to the hospital and the doctors were like, what happened? And he was in disbelief that they didn't already know. They had the nerve to ask me, Austin, what happened? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> What's he laughing at? And all I could do was laugh. Like, that's all I could do. Why? And I was like, you guys didn't see it? Like, they were like, no, what, what happened? I'm like, just, just go watch it. God, them stupid doctors, eh? They really had the audacity to do their job and not watch an Osmo Broom boxing match? How dare they? And you know what? I'm curious to see what people are saying in the comments. Let's have a look. Anyone ever have plans to go out and then the night comes and you're just not in the mood so you come up with every excuse in the book to make it seem like you can't go out? Definitely catching those vibes. Yeah, I don't want to accuse him of that because obviously I don't know, but I really wouldn't be surprised if Osmer Broom did just kind of do all this to make sure that he had some excuse in case he did lose, but uh... What do I know? It's the lack of self-awareness from you and your team that is beyond shocking. This was reckless hands down and you and your team should have known better. You put yourself, your team and Gibbs team at risk and you should be held accountable. The fact that Austin thought the idea of exposing everyone else to COVID was better than losing the fight fair and square is concerning. It really shows how his mind works and what his priorities are. But yeah, that's everyone else's opinions. I would love to know your opinions too. What's your thoughts on Osmo Broom just admitting that he went against the rules and cheated and still lost and what's your... Uh, like opinions on the excuse in general. Let me know. And yeah, if you did enjoy this video, please do a like down below, subscribe if you are new, and if you want to let me know topics to talk about in future videos, the best way to do it is on my Instagram. It's at Callum Markin. It's always linked in the description. And until the next one, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, goodbye.